I am perfectly serious when I suggest that one day we may have brain surgeons in Edinburgh operating on patients in New Zealand. When that time comes, the whole world will have shrunk to a point, and the traditional role of the city as a meeting place for man would have ceased to make any sense. On the other hand, if by some miracle a prophet could describe the future exactly as it was going to take place, his predictions would sound so absurd, so far-fetched, that everybody would laugh him to scorn. This has proved to be true in the past, and it will undoubtedly be true, even more so, of the century to come. How do we construct an environment which we're kind of constantly learning and teaching each other? Because if you think about it a moment, the best way to learn something is to teach it. And how do you construct a context where that's possible? So the example I gave a second ago was working shoulder to shoulder with another student. But maybe now it's only my avatar that's working shoulder to shoulder. And maybe what I now have is infinitely more powerful tools to be able to craft things with. These things will make possible a world in which we can be in instant contact with each other, wherever we may be, where we can contact our friends anywhere on Earth, even if we don't know their actual physical location. Sometimes it is a revolution. So that feeling, which is very widespread, you have to ask any kid or any grown-up, they will think like things are changing in an amazing way. That is what we normally call a digital revolution, an information revolution, a communication revolution. There are different labels. The point at this stage in our sort of human history is not so much that our technologies are empowering us to do extraordinary things. So it's not about what the technologies are enabling us to do with the world. The point is that by allowing us to interact with the world and other human beings in such extraordinary ways, they're putting in front of us a mirror. They're telling us that we are changing our self-understanding. The suggestion that I have is to look at the information revolution or the digital revolution what is happening today by driving your car, using a GPS and so forth, as a fourth revolution along this line. Is the view that what is really changing, of course, is the extraordinary things that we can do with the world and to the world through the technologies. But the message there is who we are. The kind of uh, informational organisms that live, flourish, interact, not as standalone entities, but as networked uh, agents in a world that is made of information. Now that further uh, movement is what I call the fourth revolution.